If you'd like to follow the process of turning a block of wood like this into a guitar like this, then you've come to the right place. And if you would like to see me give this guitar away, click subscribe, hit the bell. I am currently working on another custom guitar. Recently came to a conclusion that I wanted to do something kind of unique. Begin to give away custom guitars. So just make it nice and snug. You can adjust each and every string individually. Those are the first sounds that we're hearing out of this guitar. That is I have been working on getting this intonated. All right, string trees are now attached. What is this? What? Welcome back. Today I'm going to introduce you to two new guitars that I'm working on. And we're going to be able to give away that Telecaster style left-handed guitar. Finally, it's kind of exciting. But the first guitar that I'm going to introduce you to is this one here, which will be the very first guitar that we're going to give away to somebody that I don't know. Uh, right now, it's kind of ugly because it's, it's, it's a work in process. But I want to tell you about this piece of wood. One day I, I came home to my garage and I walk in the garage and there's this big piece of wood there and it just looks like a piece of old barn wood or something. And I went and I looked at it close. And I thought, this is mahogany. Somebody left me mahogany. I got this friend Jim who does woodworking and I thought maybe Jim left it for me. So I called him. Sure enough, he did. His dad had recently passed away, an older gentleman in his 90s, I believe. And his dad had this piece of mahogany, this large piece of mahogany, sitting around the house for the last 70 years. In fact, they moved from house to house to house, taking this piece of wood with them. And it was a, a, a piece of wood that he had gotten when he had made some uh, cabinets for his wife 70 years previously to that. But instead of letting it go on an auction, Jim thought to himself, I know somebody that could use that wood. So he gave me this big piece of mahogany. And so the back of this one is gonna be mahogany. I don't think this is gonna be my final shape yet. I'm still working that out a little bit, but I wanted to get the general shape and then start gluing these pieces on. And then I'll be able to use this as a template to route off the rest of it once I know exactly how I want it to be shaped. Uh, but I'm trying something different. I was inspired after seeing Paul McCartney's bass guitar at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and it was stained with the Union Jack flag on it. And I was inspired by that, but I didn't want to just stain it. I wanted to actually put in different types of wood. So we'll have this will, the mahogany will be stained a red, but it'll just be a stain. It's going to still look wood-like and maybe even a brownish red. And then uh, there will be other pieces uh, similar, you know, I'm just, as an example here, that will go in. These would be blue. I will stain those blue. But i got to get the pieces of wood from that yet so I can do the, these. I've got two of them that I'm working on. So that means I'm going to need to go to CW Hardwoods over in T, South Dakota to pick up some wood so that I can finish this off. The other guitar is modeled after a very iconic guitar and I want to talk to you about that one a little bit more later. That's a guitar that some of you Sardonyx fans are going to be really enthralled with and if you're a Prince fan you might be interested in this guitar. So I'll introduce that one to you after a bit. For now let's go back to working on that left-handed Telecaster style, the X-Caster I've been calling it. Let's go back to that guitar. We're going to finish it off today and then we're going to give it away. I'm going to be putting the last two screws into this guitar, or the last four potentially here. Yeah, I might go ahead and take out two of those and put in all these so they're all the same. Well, I'm going to put in the last... Okay. 
You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> I'm putting in the last sets of screws and that one just broke off right there on me. I can't believe that that happens. And I was unscrewing it. The deal is, I am be careful here. No, this one's just fine. Purple Heart is a very, very hard wood. And I mean, I mean everything's pre-drilled here. That's all done. Now I gotta figure out how to fix that. Uh, stop the video. All right, so now I'm going to put in the last screw of this guitar that I started building seven months ago in June. And I am just about done. If you've been paying attention to any of the build throughout this whole time, you're going to see that I had a battery box in the back. I was putting in the last two screws and one of the screw heads broke off and so the screw broke off into the wood. There was no way to get the screw out except to cut it out. So I had to cut it out and I went with basically I, I just figured uh, I'd go with this um, back plate like I do on a lot of my other guitars. So uh, it's something that I'm used to doing anyway. I mean, these are handy, but I guess I guess he's going to have to take two screws out in order to change the battery. That's okay. Anyway, so my plan to build this guitar has taken some turns here and there. But now I think it's, it's come together and it's good. So uh, now we're going to go play the guitar and let you hear it. And then after that... I'm going to put it in the case, I'm going to wrap it up, and he's getting it for Christmas, and he has no idea that he's getting it. I can either play it left-handed, which would look like this for the left-handed player, and uh, my hands are on the wrong side of my body to play it that way correctly, or I can play it upside down, and either way, it's not real great because now my strings are upside down and everything plays differently. So. I'm going to start off with the neck pickup and just do a little finger work and then we'll go neck pickup with the uh, bridge pickup both and then we'll just go bridge pickup alone. <laughs> This is a guitar that I started making, uh, I bet seven, eight months ago, maybe even longer. And finally, it's come back from the painter. Now, typically, if it's a guitar that's going to be stained, if, I'll stain the guitar and I'll do all of the uh, polyurethane over the guitar. If I have it painted, I have it painted by an auto body guy. Uh, my guy is John Rollins out of uh, Hutchinson, Minnesota. We kind of have this deal that uh, he, he paints the guitar for me. When I get the guitar back, then there's a thick enough coat on it, uh, a clear coat, that I am able to sand out any of the final flaws, and then I rebuff it. I think I've made 12 of these guitars now. And 
I sold a number of them at one time. That was until Dave Roussan, who made the original guitar for Prince, when Dave Roussan made that original guitar uh, for Prince, and then he made, I think, a total of four guitars, and then Andy Beach made guitars for Prince and others. I sold the first ones before a time that Dave Roussan is now getting a patent on the guitar. He is a fantastic guy. I would not do anything to try and overstep my bounds with, with him. And uh, he's just so humble and he's so, he's just quality. He's a quality guy. Got together with Dave and he showed me some things and gave me pointers and tips on how to make the guitar. Where I was going at that time was to be able to finally have one for myself. And so I was originally going to make three guitars like this. I was going to make two that I would sell and one that I would keep. And I just kept having people order them or want them. And now Dave is getting patented and so I will not sell them any longer. Um, but I can finish one off for myself yet. So I'm doing that. So just FYI. These are not for sale, but I will pull it out here. We've got blue pearling added to the white. So I don't know if it'll happen, but if you hit the light right or the light shines on it the right way, then you'll be able to see kind of a bluish pearling to the guitar. We've got the spade markers like on the original one that was in the movie Purple Rain. And there's still tape in here. That's why that looks so funny. I'll be pulling those out because those are the anchors for the for the Schaller Bridge. The uh, a lot of guys that copy get the horn wrong. One, this horn is tapered. It gets thinner as it comes down. It doesn't stay the same thickness as the guitar. In fact, I, this is about half the thickness as what the body of the guitar is around there, and uh, so it tapers in. And then how the Scrolling is actually carved at an angle in here and Dave showed me some of those things when I got together with him um, The back of the guitar now I will say I will tell you this too just uh, FYI so when Dave builds the guitar he builds with a completely neck through body so he builds this neck and it comes all the way through the body and then he puts these wing pieces on. So this piece and this piece would be added in and cut and carved. And then he will cut through here for, for the EMG SA pickup. And then on the back for the plate and everything. Well, as you can see, this really renders the, the effect of what you would have for a true neck through body guitar. When you cut all the way through, you're, you're separating this from this, except for what's on these sides. So what I did was I build with my neck up to here, and then, and then this is one piece, and this is one piece, and I put them together, mold them together. And so now where we're at is I will go through, and there are going to be little tiny flaws in the clear coat. Uh, there's one dot there and a couple little dots there that I see that I will fix. There's a little bit of a thickness right here, but that's okay because all of that will sand out. I'm starting off with 1000 grit sandpaper and I will wet sand this. So I've got my little thing of water here. I'll set that off to the side and I will just use 1000 grit sandpaper and I will wet sand it. I just cut them into little little pieces here. And I'm going to have to grab a, a rag as well. But I know this really seems like a scary thing, but what I do is I find those places and I get this wet and I just very lightly, I'm gonna work those out. And I don't have to worry about going through with a thousand grit I don't have to worry about going through the clear coat and really making a mess of this as long as I am very cautious. If I if I were to use even a 600 grit or a 400 grit, I would be much more fearful. 
but I'm okay using this thousand grit. And once I get my little bubble removed here, then what I'll go, I'll do is I'll use a 1500 grit and I'll, I'll fan it out a little more and then I'll use 2000 grit and I'll fan it out a little more and then I'll use 2500 grit and fan it out a little more and then 3000 grit and then I'll polish it up and it'll be, uh, it'll be just superb. So this is going to be really beautiful when it's all done. Take this off, I guess. I don't know. Um, it's, on the, it's on the fold. Yeah, just right here. Here.